Welcome to the Blue Coat Computer Based Training Module Proxy SG Troubleshooting Topics DNS. This course covers the following topics Useful advanced URLs on the Proxy SG to diagnose DNS issues, DNS server issues that can affect performance, and reverse DNS lookups. Three advanced URLs are especially useful in investigating DNS issues. Slash DNS provides various tools to perform lookups and to delete cache entries, as well as listing all the available advanced URLs. Slash TCP slash DNS query stats provides a count of all the requests by type and the success and failure count. It also lists all the errors that come back from a DNS server. And TCP slash DNS NS stats provides all the statistics based on each individual DNS server used within the proxy SG. The slash DNS page allows us to display a DNS entry that is either an A, quad A, or PTR, or reverse lookup. Also, we have the ability to delete a DNS entry at a very specific level. The slide shows an example of www.bluecoat.com. It includes information such as the IP address, number of IP addresses found, expiry date, number of lookups that have occurred on it, and at the very bottom, the cached entry is valid value, meaning that this entry can be used for a set period of time. TCP slash DNS query stats displays a larger list containing all the query types that have been passed through the proxy SG. We can see the A queries at the top with around 80,000. We can see that there have been two quad A queries. Below that we can see UDP and TCP. We can also see the succeeded and duplicated responses as well as various other responses based on what came back from the DNS server. By taking all these values we can work out the failure rate based on the requests and failed responses. We can determine what type is the most common failed request if it's a server failure or name error that is timing out. Also we can see the percentage of the type of DNS requests being made by the proxy SG. This advanced URL allows us to look at the specific DNS servers that have been added into the proxy SG settings. The slide shows two DNS servers, one of which is Google's DNS server. This provides a more limited view than the previous slide, but what we're looking for is how many lookups were performed how many failed, and more importantly, the times it took to do these. Using this advanced URL, we can determine whether a specific DNS server is creating the problem. When configuring a proxy SG DNS service, we put the addresses into two groups, one primary and one alternate. You can create additional groups, for example, bluecoat.com. Any request that uses the domain bluecoat.com will automatically use the two internal locations that have been configured. Any other domain that does not fall into the bluecoat.com range will immediately use the primary and alternate whenever needed. When configuring the proxy SG for DNS servers, you must consider the location of the DNS servers. With an internet-based proxy, the primary would normally be configured with an ISP DNS server or that of an open DNS server. The downside of external DNS servers is that they will not perform lookups for internal servers or perform reverse DNS lookups if policy requests these. If you are using internal DNS servers, you must make sure that they are using a forwarding service to an internet-based DNS server. Also, if you are doing reverse DNS lookups, make sure that these internal servers are correctly configured. Most of the time, the proxy SG will receive a request for a web page based on its host name. However, if a user types in an IP address, the proxy SG performs a reverse DNS lookup, also referred to as a PTR, as shown in the packet capture. This will also occur if a certain condition on the proxy SG requires the information of that lookup. For example, if you have the access log enabled, the proxy SG will perform a reverse DNS lookup because there is a field in our default access log that requires a host name, or a policy trigger event could require that we perform a reverse DNS lookup on something in a request. 
The more common situations in which this is used is when the proxy SG requires a lookup of the originating client's IP address because of a rule in policy that requires knowing the client's host name. At this point, the proxy SG will take the client's IP address and perform a reverse DNS lookup. There is a high failure rate when this occurs if the primary DNS server is an internet-based DNS server. In the packet capture, we can see that the request came in. We then see the PTR lookup, which is the IP address in reverse order. We see it go out to the internet. We then see no such name, which is expected. We then use the alternate, which would normally be an internal server, and this also returns a no such name, meaning that our internal DNS server has not been correctly configured to perform that query. In this example, using a policy trace, we set up a simple rule that says client.host.substring equals internal. All this is doing is looking for the word internal in the response. Further down, we can see it says that for the client host of 10.90.1.119, the host name was not found. In the Visual Policy Manager, we can configure some settings that will stop the proxy SG from performing these reverse DNS lookups if desired to enhance performance. Thank you for watching. This concludes the computer based training Proxy SG Troubleshooting Topics DNS. For more information, visit the following Bluecoat resources the Knowledge Base, available at bto.bluecoat.com, and the Customer Discussion Forums, available at forums.bluecoat.com. For additional questions or comments regarding this training module, contact us at training.books at bluecoat.com.